One morning, John was walking through the forest near his cabin when he suddenly heard a painful howl from a nearby wolf. Alarmed, he dropped his gear and cautiously approached the source of the noise, navigating through thick bushes. As he peered through a cluster of dense foliage, he found himself face to face with a huge wolf, its legs pitifully caught in a rugged trap. Despite its frantic attempts to escape, the wolf had finally given up and lay down, breathing heavily. The wolf looked exhausted, its eyes conveying a deep sense of despair. Shook it be the scene, John wanted to help the animal, but hesitated as he got closer. The wolf, sensing his presence, growled and snapped it aggressively, pulling on his chains in a desperate attempt to fend off what it perceived as a threat. Reluctant to see the wolf harm itself further, John carefully stepped back, assessing the situation. It was then that he noticed something unexpected. The wolf was clearly a female, her teeth swollen with milk, indicating that somewhere, if they were still alive, her pups were waiting for her. Realizing the pups wouldn't survive long without their mother, John knew he had to act quickly. However, approaching the stressed and trapped female was nearly impossible without exacerbating her distress. She was close to death, severely bleeding from a leg wound inflicted by the rusty trap and would definitely die if left alone. Determined not to let it end this way, John formulated a plan to save both the mother wolf and her pups. Every second was critical. John gathered his courage, donned a pair of thick gloves for protection, and cautiously approached again, speaking softly to the wolf in an attempt to calm her. Gently touching the wolf's trapped paw, he was surprised when she didn't react. She was almost unconscious from the cold and loss of blood. Quickly, John held her head gently with one hand while trying to press the release button of the trap with the other, but it was jammed, likely due to the wolf's desperate escape attempts. Without any time to waste, John grabbed a nearby stone and forcefully struck the trap's mechanism several times. His persistence paid off, and the trap finally snapped open. The unconscious wolf could wake up at any moment and potentially attack him out of confusion and fear. For safety, John used a soft rope from his pocket to loosely tie the wolf's mouth, ensuring she could still breathe easily but not bite. Realizing he couldn't carry her by himself, he fashioned a makeshift stretcher from nearby branches and his heavy coat. He then gently lifted the wolf onto the stretcher and began dragging her towards his cabin, which was a few hundred meters away. The journey back took almost an hour, and by the time he reached his cabin, he was exhausted but relieved. Once inside, he placed her by the fireplace, which was already stocked with logs. He quickly lit a fire, and as the house warmed up, he began treating her wounds. Using a first aid kit he kept for emergencies, he cleaned and dressed her wounds with great care, applying antiseptic to prevent infection. John had medical training from his time in the military and knew exactly what to do. The wolf's leg was severely injured, but fortunately not broken. He wrapped her leg tightly to prevent further injury. If he had waited any longer to free her, she would have likely lost the leg. Now his focus was solely on helping her recover. As the wolf slowly began to show signs of recovery, John and the wolf made eye contact for a second time. This time, her gaze was less wary and more resigned, as if she understood he was trying to help. After ensuring the mother wolf was stable, he left her resting comfortably in his home and set out to find her pups in the vast forest. With his background in the Canadian military and his extensive experience living in the woods, John's survival and tracking skills were crucial. He took with him a small pack with supplies and a compass, determined to locate the den he suspected might be nestled in a rocky outcrop he had seen during previous hikes. John searched extensively, navigating rugged terrain and using markers he had learned to recognize. Finally, he found a den that looked like a narrow hole hidden beneath an ancient fallen tree. As he approached the den, he heard faint whimpers coming from inside. Peeking inside, he saw the wolf pups huddled together, their small eyes wide with fear and curiosity. John knew he needed to act carefully to not frighten them further. He lay down on the ground, making himself as small as possible, and softly called to the pups. His voice, filled with kindness and a hint of playfulness, slowly coaxed the pups out. The tiniest pup, braver than the rest, made the first move, stepping out tentatively and sniffing the air. John stayed still, allowing the pup to approach him. 
Once the first pup ventured out, the others followed, their tails wagging cautiously. John let out a sigh of relief and happiness as the pups gathered around him, nuzzling against his hands and face, seeking comfort. Knowing he couldn't carry all four pups by himself, John used the large pockets of his heavy coat to gently place the pups inside. Each pup was secured and warm against his body as he carefully made his way back to the cabin. Upon returning, the mother wolf, hearing the muffled sounds of her pups, struggled to rise. John quickly set the pups down on the floor, and they immediately ran to their mother. The reunion was touching, with the mother wolf licking her pups affectionately, her tail wagging weakly as she settled down with her pups cuddled around her. Over the next few weeks, John took care of the wolf family, providing them with food and ensuring the mother wolf's recovery. He built a small enclosure for them in his yard, giving them space to move around while keeping them safe. One morning, John went into the forest to collect wood. He had left his door open, allowing wolf cubs to freely enter and exit. The scent of the cubs had attracted the pack, bringing them to John's house where he had saved these cubs. When John saw the other wolves, he froze and was very frightened. Encountering a large pack of wolves, including adults searching for their cubs in his yard, truly surprised him. The wolves, upon seeing John, became uneasy. They showed their teeth and began to growl, ready to attack at any moment. Then, unexpectedly, one of the wolves jumped in front of John and howled loudly. This was the female wolf John had helped. Her howl made all the other wolves back off. However, John didn't underestimate the danger of the pack. He quickly returned to his cabin and locked the door tightly behind him. After locking the door of his cabin and taking a deep breath, John looked out the window and saw the wolf pack moving away. His heart was still racing, but he also felt a deep sense of pride for what he had done. He had saved the cubs and the female wolf, giving them another chance. As he slept that night, he felt the value of his actions even more profoundly. The howling of the wolves struck the walls of his cabin with the wind, but now that sound no longer signified fear, but reminded him that he was a part of nature. The next morning, when John woke up, he found peace in the silence of nature. Stepping outside, he followed the tracks of the female wolf and her cubs. A few hundred meters away, as he climbed a hill, he spotted them. The female wolf and her cubs had returned to their natural habitat. Watching them from a distance, John once again realized the importance of helping animals, despite the challenges of wildlife and survival. Seeing them freely frolic in the depths of the forest greatly amplified the value of his sacrifice. Please don't forget to like the video, share it with your loved ones, and subscribe to the channel.